Hey guys, Brito here. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to um, help you guys look at getting some good in-game screenshots of your cars and I'm going to go through into Photoshop and show you how I edit the video for my thumbnails. So give you some ideas for those of you who watch my channel who have your own channel as well, want to do thumbnails or even you guys that just want to get some decent screenshots, whether you want to share them with friends or family or our racing community, whatever you guys want to do. But... Straight into options. I think if we go into uh, replay, no, it'll be in controls somewhere. Uh, replay controls. I'm not sure where it is now. Anyway, I think it is pretty sure you press control or left control and F12. Um, for me, I have changed it. Oh, here we go. Open the camera tool. Control KP plus. So that's what I use, but it's usually Control F12. The reason why I don't have it set as F12 is F12 for me is start recording on OBS. So what you want to do is press Control F12 or Control plus, like I do. This will bring up um, your camera edit. What I always do doesn't matter what what um, angle or anything I want to use. I always make sure you go straight to aim type static. Zoom, go from zoom to static field of view. If you press left control and Z, which gives you free reign with your mouse, so and you press W for forward, S for back, A for left, D for right, you can press control and left, which will just leave the camera in the same spot, but it'll rotate left and right. Um, S and D will move the camera up and down, like pan up and down. Um, Alt and A will rotate left. Rotate right to D and W and S will go up and down. So the height. So because I've got Control Z pressed in, we can go anywhere. So what I'm going to do with this one is use my left mouse to move in, the right mouse to move out. So depending on what you want to do, and then hold my left Alt and just go down. I want to get nice and close to the ground. I think. Also press spacebar if you want to to remove um, the overlay. So I'm going to hold Alt again and just hold A, just rotate it a little bit. Now I'm going to press Control Z, which will I can move my mouse without moving the camera. So what I do to take my screenshots is I hold the FN key on my keyboard, the bottom left, the function key, and press Print Screen. Um, that will come up so you can copy and paste it into Photoshop if you want to, or for me, I have it um, in Dropbox. So every time I press function and print screen it'll save a copy of that screenshot straight to my Dropbox folder so that's the first photo done so now what we want to do is get a photo the exact same photo but without the car in it so all we need to do is rewind backwards actually that's probably not going to work see how the ground has sort of come up there so I'm going to have to press Control Z again and just move up a couple of clicks there we go I bring the car back in to about there, roughly where I had it before. Uh, I'm going to press function print screen again. So the reason why I did that is because we would have had a weird grey mark here, which we can edit out in Photoshop if you want to. It's just easier to do it this way. So we've taken the photo of the car. Now we want to get the car out of the screenshot. So we've got here, so you can see there's no car. Hit the space bar, no car, nothing there. So press function and print screen again. That should have the two photos saved. So what I'll do now is I will um, jump out of the iRacing server and I'll come back when I'm ready to get you guys into Photoshop and show you how I edit the photo. So don't go anywhere, we'll be back very, very soon. Righto guys, I'm back. So you can see here um, we're in our Windows um, photo viewer. So you can see screenshot here. Then we press across the right screenshot there without the car in it. You'll see I've got triple screen, so this bit over here won't matter, and this bit over here, which is my OBS, won't matter either. So using these two, these two photos. So what I'll do now is I'll go straight into Photoshop. Um, I'm using I uh, can't remember what the program is. It's Photoshop Elements. Yeah, PSE Photoshop Elements. Um, I, can't remember, I think it's 9, 
but I think I'm pretty sure you can do it, probably do it with any um, any Photoshop. I'm not sure about um, GIMP or anything. GIMP is or GIMP two is a free version of like Photoshop, but it's different. I don't know how to use it. I haven't really spent any time in it. So uh, what we always do straight away is go image. Uh, we want to go resize the canvas size. Uh, and I always go 50.79 centimeters. That's what it is for me. So if we go back in there, we just press left con control, left alt C for canvas. If you want to go pixels, just make sure it's 1920 by 1080. Now I'll need to bring up, um, if I quickly grab it, bring in our other photo with no background. I'll do the same left control alt C. We'll go to pixels this time. So we want to do 1920 by 1080. So that's our photo here with the car, the one without. So we want to come down here and drag that on top. So that'll put it there. Uh, if you go layer, I'm not sure if you can do it here. Um, I've never done it here before. Layer style, no. Anyway, this side. So over here I use, so you go layer, click on where it says normal, you go to difference. So you can see now there's two different the two different photos, it shows the difference between both. So we bring this up here. So this is a rectangular marquee tool. Drag over the whole thing. You go edit, copy merge. So shift control C or go up to edit, copy merged. Go to layer new. Doesn't matter what you call the layer. And then you just go edit and paste. So that's the new merge layer pasted there so we'll zoom in a little bit I always go to our magic wand tool tolerance 15 I do anywhere from 5 to 22 depending so now all we need to do is click on that and you'll see it's pretty much near perfect a few things here we'll need to touch up if we just click here that'll clear that we can um, bring in this the square magic tool again so that'll get rid of that so if we come back into here and then go um, on this layer, you want to make sure you've got the layer selected. That one, so cut that, um, delete layer two, which is going to be the outside. So if I go back to this one, go to normal, hide that layer, hide that layer as well. You can see that the car will pop in and out, same as if we get rid of the background. So we've just got the car. There's a few things you want to take out from there as well. So what I'll do is I'll delete that layer, but we need to go back to this layer one. So what we want to do, so we can get rid of that. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, so go back to this layer here, layer one. Bring it back in our magic wand tool. You want to get rid of all this black, all the black stuff in here. Um, yeah, even that, actually, I'm not sure if that's, that's part of the seat. So we can leave that in all these. The reason why I've got 15 is because if you click on this and go say 150 and click on that, it's going to select heaps. So around about 5 or 15 is pretty good. So you're not selecting too much. But you're selecting just enough. You can obviously manually do this if you if you can't get it quite right. You can manually do it. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but the better you get it, you know, the better it's going to look. So any mistakes, just press Control Z to get rid of it. So that's all the inside of the car we're going to get removed. Now down here, we've got a black spot there. So we'll try and get rid of that. But you can see how it's sort of selected part of the front bumper of the car. So what I'll go to now is the poly, polygonal lasso tool. So if you press this button now, it's going to gain, it's going to grab all of that. So we'll get rid of that. If you hold the left alt you'll see the plus there hopefully you can see that the plus will go to a minus so what I'll do now is go from here and just try to get like a straight line to get rid of that so we're not taking any of that car away uh, make sure we click on that again I'm pretty sure we've done all that anyway I'm gonna get rid of that get rid of a bit of this darker stuff in there as well so that should all be pretty good. So we go back to this and go cut. Now I'm going to delete 
all those layers, so now all we're going to have left over is the car all by itself. So you can see here it's still a little bit dark under there, which we can have a look at once we've done a few other things, but what I always do now is I go to our background layer, go to filter, blur and motion blur, and then here is where you can select you know, the different angles, um, how much blur, whether you do just do 25 or you know 50, 100, I guess it just depends on what you guys really think looks good. I think it's about 25 to 50 looks pretty good. I think you know it's anywhere between there is pretty good. Obviously the car is moving in this direction so you want it to sort of blur this way. So then you press OK. So you'll notice now if we get rid of the background the car is not blurred, it's only the background. Then what I'll do is grab the eraser tool. This is something you don't have to do if you don't want to. Um, zoom in a little bit here. If you grab the eraser tool and make sure you select so something like this, soft round or airbrush soft round, something along those lines. You don't want a proper airbrush because you see how you get that really weird, like harsh line. If you get rid of that and go back to say the soft round, and now if you select the right layer um, and get rid of that, you can see it. It gets rid of it and it sort of does get rid of the tire a little bit, but once you zoom back out, it sort of just looks like you're um. Go back to redo. It sort of just looks like you're only you're getting rid of that, but then you just the tires are just a little bit dirty, if you know what I mean. So you can do that. You don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, it's just, it just depends on what you guys really want, what sort of effect you're going for. Um, you can use the airbrush, or soft round. I might make it a little bit bigger. Just get rid of a little bit of the shadow under here. Not too much, of course. I might get rid of that and start that again because I did do a little bit of a boo boo there with that tire. There you go, it looks a lot better like that. There we go. So I think that looks pretty good. So then, depending on what you want to do, um, you can insert text. Um, as you'll see, a lot of my thumbnails, I'll um, just put in like a box up the top here. I will grab this and then say skew that back, something like that, move it to wherever you want it to be and then um, obviously put in some text, and just type in street stock or whatever you want to have up there, um, select any any font that you like, you can move that up to there and there's a lot of other things you can go with like edit layer style, you can put in a stroke so you can change this to like a red if you want, so it actually outlines the um, the black. You can bevel it so it sort of stands out a lot more. So bevel on and off, which doesn't really do much there. Then you can go it. You can put in a drop shadow if you like. Now, there's a lot of things that you can do to make things look a lot better. So, but obviously, if you don't want that, you just want a standard photo. Just do that, but then save it as it is. So obviously, once you go to save. Press File, Save As. It's going to come up with the name of what the screenshot is. It's going to come up with the Photoshop PSD. I always save everything as a JPEG. It doesn't really matter. So you just save it as, say, Street Stock USA. Saved. Now, if I go back into, if I can find you guys can't see me doing this, but I'll go back into where it's saved to. I will bring up the photo now. So we get rid of Photoshop. Um, okay, for some reason it's... Oh, oh, that's why. Okay, get rid of that. There we go. So this is these are the two photos we had before. So that's our in-screen shot with the car, one without, and then that's our final product. So it does look a whole heap better with um, us blurring the background. This makes everything look like the cars moving you know if you want to do anything else you can put in like your team logo down the bottom left corner whatever you want to do to try and attract people to your video um, if you're putting this up on youtube of course a lot of people including me when i go to youtube not only do i look at um, the name of the video 
always check and look at the thumbnail. The thumbnail looks stupid. I don't bother watching the video. The thumbnail looks awesome. It's usually always the first one I click on. So you want to make sure your thumbnail looks good. You want to make sure you've got a good description in your title and that sort of thing. If you just want a photo like this, as I said, for your own personal keeping or to put on like your team page or to share with friends or family, then that's more than enough what you've got there. That's it's absolutely perfect. So hopefully this guy this helps you out, guys. Um, if you have any questions, please comment. Leave leave it in the comments below. Ask any questions. I'll try and help you out the best I can. I'm no professional with um, graphic design or anything. Um, I've just learned this by watching a few other people on YouTube and um, just fiddling with things. Pretty much, I've learned how to sort of do this myself as well as watching a few other people. Um, but if you did enjoy the video and it has helped you out. Make sure you hit that like button. It does help the channel out a lot. If you haven't subscribed, guys, please do so. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell next to it so you don't miss a video that I upload. And hopefully you guys will come on over and watch my iRacing stuff if you haven't seen it yet. But yeah, hopefully, I really hope this helps you guys out. It's been Bruno's Gaming. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.